Hello gamers, it's SoftKitty99 and today it's time for that time of year, it's Christmas! So I thought we would try and make a house for Santa and maybe a few of his elves. So it's been kind of a getaway from the North Pole, base of operations somewhere a little bit warmer for holidays and uh, maybe a little bit of coordination around Christmas for restocking and stuff. And I thought we would use the old art house one of the new houses from the new expansion a great big house on its corner plot right by the ocean as you can see it's very dilapidated and it's going to need a lot of work so I figure we'll do some setting up in the first episode uh, so there's going to be a short sections of playthrough and then gaps while I go away and do lots of things so I'll show you around the house then I'll go away and clean it up and show you what it looks like think about colour schemes do a bit of work on the garden. I'm not going to overwork the garden, just neaten it up a little bit, I think. As you can see, we're going to need to plaster some of the outside walls, cut the grass, remove some of the weeds and things, spray clean the outside of the house. So there's a lot of work and a lot of setup, so I think it's going to take me quite a long time to set the house up, and we're not going to do all of that on camera, we're going to do a little look here and there. So. If we grab the hose, we can see the difference look, between the dirty house and the clean house. I'm not going to spray the whole thing on camera, I'll come back and do the rest of that later. We need to replace windows all the way around the house, like so. Plaster all these walls, look, loads and loads of holes on this section here, look. And there's a few around the rest of the house, so we'll do that again. So let's grab some... Uh, there's plaster, right, grab the plaster, put a nice big of this big pot of this out for us. And then we can plaster in all these holes. Look, this is the worst section because they've got lots of holes next to each other. We need to sell these doors because we can't even open and close them. Now we'll turn this into like a little closet area, cloak room for everyone that's staying at the house. And as we're going to go through like this in every room, sell all of the junk, clean up all the dirt. And I'm going to do most of that off camera because time-wise it would be after Christmas before I finish cleaning probably. If <laughs> I did, did everything on camera, so yeah, I'll clean all of this up later. This will probably be a little living room. I'm thinking this great big room here could become... A little Santa's workshop for Santa and the elves to build toys and things maybe because it's a great big open long room so we're going to be stretching the um, game a little bit because it's not set up really to, to like build a Santa's workshop and stuff though there are toys and things now so we'll see how far we can stretch the game I think this will be like a little entrance hall maybe a great big Christmas tree could go in here with the stairs, I'm not quite sure about the head clearance. And this could be a reading room library area, maybe. With the big bay window. That's the front door, you see, we definitely need to replace that. So lots of cleaning needs to be done, you see. And then the kitchen area. This again, of course, will be a kitchen. As we're going to have multiple people living here, so we're going to need a nice big table in here for meals. I think I might rearrange the walls here a bit, because we've got like the housekeeper's area here with a, a little bathroom and a bedroom. I think we'll turn part of the bathroom into a little toilet sink area for downstairs, just off the workroom. And I think we'll close up that wall and open it out into the workroom and make the rest of it a little light storage area for keeping toys in storage. As you can tell I've actually had this idea rolling around in my head and giving it a little bit of thought. And then we'll just have the nice big grand corridor, which of course will stay as a very big grand corridor. Possibly put a little bit of seating or something in here on this landing area. Maybe a nice sofa or a table and some chairs. And then this room at the end here, you see, this one's not got a bathroom or walk-in closet like it did in the work order. I think we're going to turn this into a big office for maybe Santa and a couple of the head elves or something. 
I think it's big enough to do that, isn't it? Because it's not like a CEO and staff set up where they'll all be in the same room because they're all friends as well. And then this, I think, would become Sandra and Mrs. Claus's room. And they will have a little walk-in closet and their own little private bathroom. We'll definitely need to get rid of those. Oh, we can't sell the blinds before we... Oh, right, you have to change the window first and then you can sell the blind. Slightly odd way, but there you go. Oh, yay. There you go. So you have to change the window first and then you can sell the blind. That bath looks a little odd, doesn't it? Looks like it's almost made out of cardboard. It's probably supposed to be some sort of sandstone material, but it kind of looks like it's made out of cardboard. That's really weird looking. Right. It can go. I'm supposed to be doing that off camera, aren't I, all the selling, right? And then this room, which is quite a big one with a bit of a balcony, though you can't place anything on the balcony, so I find that a little odd. And uh, this is going to be like a little barracks room with a few beds for, like, the elves that have come to stay, or the visitors, or whatever. But yeah, probably two or three elves will have beds here. And then this great big, huge, wonderful balcony, you can't place anything on. So I'm going to go and clean everything up. And then I'll come back and show you what we've got, and maybe we'll think about some colour schemes as we go then. Full bathroom, let me just show you the bathroom. Okie doke, here we go. And as you can see, I've had a really good clean up. I've filled in all the plaster areas, cut all the grass, removed all the weeds, sold some of the plants. Here's all the areas that have been plastered up, look. All cut at the back, got rid of all the extra little bits of weeds and things, sprayed all the outside of the house, cleaned all the rooms inside. So we've got our blank canvas now ready to start working on it. So I think the next thing to do is think about flooring, walls, paint colours, wallpapers. And obviously because it's Christmas, I think we already have an idea of what our colour scheme is probably going to be. it's for Christmas we're going to be very traditional. We have kept some of the fireplaces because they all seem to work and I think we might be incorporating those into our designs. There's great big fireplaces, is always a nice thing at winter. So this is the little section where we've rearranged the walls you see. So we've created a little powder room, bathroom and then what was the housekeeper's bedroom now becomes a storage room and it you can't walk through into the kitchen anymore. So it's going to be off our workshop area you see and there I don't think they've kept again there is the fireplace although the wallpaper is fully serviceable it doesn't really match the colour scheme that we're going to be going for because it's Christmas oh look I missed a light switch there we go so that will be your main entrance here I think a great big Christmas tree would be the best thing um, stairs could be a little bit problematic because they might make that the tree placement is a little bit limited. Right, so let us revamp the staircase. So the red carpeting is probably going to be what we're going to go with, but we'll look at the stairs first. I think I think the dark wood actually is very Christmassy, especially if we keep the bright red runner. Right, now I don't, I don't like the really dark front of the steps it just makes everything so very very dark you see so we'll go with the white on the front of the stairs just to make it a little bit lighter and brighter here definitely going to go with the red carpet and the balustrade do we want to go the same colour as the stairs or a little bit lighter do you know what I think the lighter would probably be a little bit better and I prefer the gold red and gold is very Christmassy I like that yeah that looks like a very Christmassy staircase I like it and that's back into the workshop. So that's two, three, three different routes into the workshop. And then kitchen, which now is closed off from the what used to be the housekeeper's room. And I did change all the sockets that were marked as red earlier. I repaired all of those. I didn't forget them. And then if we go upstairs. I've given that the good old clean as well. So we've sold everything, including all the curtains and everything. 
cleaned everything off, we repaired all these broken sockets, so everything's ready now. We've just kept the cuckoo clock and the fireplace up here. As I said, this is going to be an office space, so I thought keeping the cuckoo clock there, because it's a very traditional little clock, might be quite in keeping with the char traditional character of centre as well, so we'll keep the cuckoo clock. But that's the only one I've kept, because there were a couple in the house, but I only kept the one in what would be the office space. So everything just looks so much bigger and more open with just everything removed. So we are ready to think about colour schemes and things going forward. I think we might start upstairs actually. Just to kind of makes sense because this is where we are, isn't it? It's not a huge walk-in closet, but it's perfect. It's wonderful for two people. I mean, let's be honest, it's a luxury to have a walk-in closet, no matter how big or how small it is. It's a wonderful balcony, isn't it? It's just a shame we can't put anything on the balcony. In other balconies we can, so I'm not quite sure why we can't in this particular house. Something different about the way it's built, obviously. A little walk-in closet here again. You can have multiple people using the room. Uh, it's nice to have a closet space here because that means you've got less clutter in the main room itself. It'll only need beds, maybe bedside tables, and a decent-sized bathroom here for. Though you wouldn't want multiple people in the bathroom at the same time unless they're just cleaning teeth. In which case, we definitely need at least two sinks in that one. Or should we start outside in the garden? You know, it might not be a bad idea to do a little bit of something here. See, now, because we've got plaster all over the walls, we will either need to buy more of the white panels to cover it up, or paint the whole house. Uh, I think for this one, I'm going to paint the whole house. I think when we do a later renovation of it, for a, a more traditional renovation, I think we might use the white panels and just cover up the sections where we've plastered. But I think we're going to paint and I think I would really like to do the house in two colours. Guess which colours we're going to go for? I don't think it's hard to pick, is it? So, yes, of course, red and green. Because it's Christmas house. Yes, every, nearly everything's going to be red and green, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to really go wholeheartedly into this red and green thing and see where we come. I might give in at some point and try and add a smattering of snow or something, but... Yeah, and the majority of the house is going to be red and green because we're going to, we're really going to go for the very heavy Christmas theme, and that way you can see what works and what doesn't, and then you'll know what to avoid and what to use, and see what you can come up with. We'll try and use as many different greens and reds as we can. I'm a little bit torn on the outside of the house. I kind of want it to be paler because it's the outside of the house, and then on the other hand, I kind of want to go all in on the really dark colours and just go for it and see what happens but it, the outside of the house if you if that looks horrible that's that's going to be a big oh no right so let's let's try a light green shall we and see what we think let's just put two down and then we're going to want to see what it looks like on the house i should have only bought one shouldn't i just to see what it looks like on the house See, it's a, it's a nice green, and it's it's okay on the outside of the house, but I'm not sure it's Christmassy. It's not dark enough, is it, to be seriously Christmassy? But that would actually work for the outside of the exterior of the house, wouldn't it? That's, that's good, because I probably wouldn't have thought of putting green on the outside of the house if we weren't thinking about the Christmas theme. So it's good to know that these paler colours all work for the outside, kind of blends your house into the surroundings. Probably be nicer on a smaller house. Well, let's go for a solid red. Let's try it on the little end so that we can do like the smaller sections on the ground floor that kind of stick out from the house could be done in red in contrast to the green. So I think if everything was one colour it would be just too much especially in a bright colour, so I think we definitely want that contrast. I like that because that's a solid red, which now makes me question the pale green. Ooh, can we reach that little top section? If I, how about if I jump? Can, oh, you've got to go to the angle right if you're going to try and jump, haven't you? Now we've painted the lower area. Ah, there, so you can do it, but it's a little bit weird. 
definitely going to need scaffolding to paint the house. But uh, yeah, I really like the red. It's a nice bright red. But I think the green now is definitely too pale. Now I regret buying two tins of the paint because I think we would want something darker. I like the fact that the red is really bright. I think if we'd gone for one of the really, really dark reds, it would have looked wrong. The really, really bright looks quite good. Ooh, strong green, that's definitely a possibility, isn't it? Let's grab one of those and try that little section right next to the red and see if we like that. Ooh, I like that better than the pale one, definitely. For the Christmas theme, yeah, I like that better. Oh, much better. Right, so that's what we're going to go for. We're going to go for the bright red and the dark green. So our colours are Crimson Confusion and Heavy Green. Let's paint. And here's our finished version of the house. Crimson Confusion for the red and Heavy Green for the dark green. And I think the contrasting colours are actually really good. I like the solid dark green on the main house with just a little pop of bright, bright red on just the little bits that stick out on the... So I've got three little sections in bright red that just kind of stick out on the ground floor. Just enough to not overwhelm but to give you that nice pop of colour and contrast. So yeah, I think you can tell I really, really like these colours. And I definitely think the house feels Christmassy. Because it's got lots and lots of windows, it also makes that heavy green, that dark green colour, not overpowering. I think we do need to add a little bit of stuff to the garden, but I don't want to overdo the garden, so I just want to add like a few plants just to dress it up a little bit. Keep it fairly easy to look after again. So we kind of want Christmas trees. And then maybe some red plants or something, red flowering plants. And what do we have in the tree? Is it under needle plants? Yes, look, there we've got con coniferous shrubs at least. I don't think we have any great big huge like Christmas trees, but we do have some of these like little ornamental juniper Things. We could maybe put these near the front door, put a few of them near the front door to just have that like slightly ornamental feel. Let's try and put them roughly opposite each other. How about four, like that. Because then it's the same at both sides, isn't it? Yeah, let's dig those in. I think that will give it a little bit of a lift, won't it? make the entrance a little bit more ornate and it adds a little bit of Christmas into the garden. See the theme's Christmas so you can either go strictly with Christmassy plants or you can go with Christmassy colours so I'm going to go for more for conifers because they're the traditional Christmas trees and then I'm going to go with red flowers I think because the garden's all green anyway so we'll add a few red flowers and I'm not going to look for things that would be around near Christmas because that, that really limits what you can use. We're just going to look for red I think and we're just going to put like little additional ornaments so like we've got these trees near the front door to dress up the entrance then maybe we'll put a few near the driveway, a few red flowering plants near the driveway kind of line the edges of that little section and then we probably won't do a ton more to the garden maybe a couple of seating areas on like the back patio area and that might be all we do actually yeah see just a little tiny touch adds a little bit to the house doesn't it if there were any really big Christmassy trees I would probably add a few of those around the garden as well but I think the biggest thing that we've got is going to be this coniferous shrub isn't it 
think this is like the biggest sort of conifer style tree we've got so maybe we'll add a couple of these um, maybe near the driveway just see what they look like which style do we like best this is what looks most Christmas tree to you personally I think for your choice yeah you see that's that's nice isn't it but oh maybe we put them here in this little square that might be quite nice let's try that so I'm not going to fill the garden just want to add a few Christmassy touches so let's put these two which I think are the biggest sort of conifer in the garden section so we add a couple here. I mean, if you're going to have them near the house, you don't want them to be too big trees because you don't want to undermine your foundations. The tree should never be taller than the distance it is away from your house. So that's just about safe, but you'd have to make sure they didn't grow any taller. And some of the trees that are in this garden are definitely too close to the house for safety for your foundation. So there you go. Little fact that most people don't know. Trees height should be the distance from your house to keep your foundation safe at the very least. So do watch out for that if you're going to buy a new house. Looking for things that have red flowers. Ooh, rhododendron, that's quite a decent sized plant, isn't it? In red. Yeah, see if we put that here on this little section, it's it's tall enough to be noticeable, but not too tall that you can't see the house and the rest of the garden. And then maybe if we could find something taller with a red, we can put it on the other side of the driveway closer to the wall area and that can kind of block the wall a little bit to make it look like the garden's bigger from the house. Wait, can we get red ole oleander? Yes, we can. That's taller. Oh yes, let's, let's try a few of these down here. Let's just kind of line the driveway. So they're not, they're not hugely tall. They're not going to block the view of the rest of the garden and they're not going to block out the uh, big concrete fence, are they? But let's do that. It's going to take us a few minutes to dig those in and I think that that's going to look quite nice isn't it and I think having that nice pop of colour near the entranceway is just going to make a big difference to the garden itself because yeah you don't need to always put in tons and tons of things you can just make a few changes and that will make a huge difference to the entire overall look of the project and the look of the garden and that's also less plants for you to have to look after And sometimes multiples of the same plant, like in a, a little row, to like divide up the garden a bit, can make a, a big difference to the way it looks. But let's water in all the plants so we get some up again. Sometimes it just does have these little, can't quite manage to talk its way through. Just wait a second and it usually sorts itself out. So we've finished planting these few plants, there we go, and water them all in. And that's a really nice splash of the nice bright red colour. I really love red actually. One of my favourite colours. Reds and pinks I think are my favourites. So if I'm given the chance to use them a lot I probably will. I don't know if that comes through in the videos. I do try to use a variety of different colours. Right, so let's pop in this oleander with the red flowers. And water it in. And then I think we've only got one more left for this pretty little row of red flowers. Definitely the last one here. So there's our nice oleander with our red flowers. Very pretty. Well, I didn't space them out neatly. I just threw them down. I think that looks pretty good actually. So we've not done a ton to the garden, but I think it's made a big difference to the garden. It's added a pop of colour a little bit of prettiness and a few conifers just to add our theme of Christmas. So yeah, I like that. 
So I think it's time to start around the back now. So like I said, I think I'd like to put a little bit of seating in. So maybe we can put like a sofa bench thing here near the windows. And then near the fountain we got rid of the old table and chairs and we'll probably want to replace that with a new one. Um, maybe sofas is the better thing to go because this is in an overhang under the balcony, isn't it? So we can keep things like that dry. Mm, no, I'm not sure. I'm, mm, no, I don't think the colours match our colour scheme. I think this one is prettier, the Soros sofa. So really, is that the only... Mm, there isn't anything that's really Christmassy, so I think we're going to have to go with the only one with a splash of colour, which is that one. And then make the cushions, the red flowers and black as well. Yeah, I think that's the closest we've got to Christmas theme in the sofas for the outside. So if we pop that, will it fit between the windows? Just that would be quite nice, a little bit further forward. Yes, lovely. Yeah, so just a little bit of simple seating there, you see. And then near the fountain we want a table and chairs to replace the ones that we had to sell, the old ones. So we're looking for a nice size table. So we look for something that we think is pretty. That's quite nice, the jammer with the sapel. The problem is you can't see what sizes they are, so we set up what we think would be a, a decent colour. So dark red on the edge and sapel in the centre. You see that's much too small to be a table and chairs. If you just want two, two seats at either side of it, that Womey table. I have a feeling that this one's quite small as well. But let's have a look what sort of yes, yeah, so we could do a pink or a pastel rose base and a sapel top to match the colour scheme. Again, that would be if you wanted to put a chair at either side of the table rather than a big table with four chairs around it. But I think if we're gonna have this like outside of workshop, we kind of want at least four chairs, don't we? So we could go for one of the ones with the umbrella because we know they're big and then that would give us a little bit of shade or protection. I'm not sure how good it would be as protection from the rain, but the bright red umbrella and the cherry table. So that's the Numa with the parasol. That's interesting, it doesn't seem to want to let me put it there. That's kind of in the centre, Look, because if, if you look, they've got the small tiles around the outside and then the big ones in the centre, and that kind of in the centre of the big tiles, so that kind of feels like the place it should be. But the game wasn't happy with that, and now it's um, lagging again a little bit. Yeah, it's been doing that quite a lot since the update, so I keep hoping that they're going to fix whatever's going on, but I don't, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Just give it a second to sort it out. There we go. Now we can try it. Oh, it kind of sank the table under the tiles. Oh, that was what the problem was. So it will fit in that centre section like we thought it would. So now we want four chairs to match that. So the table's numerous. So can we have... Oh, yes, we have got a chair that matches good. Not everything does, but that one did. So if we make the seat cover the dark red and the cherry for the chairs, and then we'll just cut them at all the quarters around and then we've got that pop of red colour against our dark green wall again I like that, I think we're doing really well here and I think that's probably about all we're going to do outside yeah that's nice they've just got a little bit of somewhere to sit outside for relaxing because so you can come out to either the sofa or the chairs and table from the little workshop area looks there's a door going each way out of that little section there in the back so that, that I think is all we're going to do for the garden so I think we'll probably start on the side of the house in the next episode but yeah I'm quite pleased with that I think that that's made a huge improvement to the house and the garden oh that's pretty isn't it I really like that so we've not done a huge lot to the garden, but it's made a huge difference to the look and appeal of the house itself. Do you know what? We're missing one thing for the garden. 
and this is the thing that we're missing. We need the Christmas sleigh, because you can't have Santa without a sleigh. So we could go for the green seats, maybe. Which colours of wood have we got? We've got three, so we'll go for the red and I think the gold accents. Now, what do we think about the green seats? It's very... Mm, maybe the red? I think red. I think red. So, let's see, which way around is the right way around for the sleigh? So we could point it down towards the water and then theoretically it could line your reindeer up on the grass but I think we might have a tree in the way or we could point it down to the front gates so the front of course is the higher section because that's where you attach the reins and then the seat look you can see is in the back I think we want to rotate that around and then I think we're done for today so hope you enjoyed today's episode please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one from Softkey to 99 goodbye and Happy Games!